Hey guys, it's Dowden. In this two minute tutorial, we're gonna be talking about sends and returns and how we can use them to benefit us in our mix. A send is a knob or a fader that allows you to dial in a specific amount of signal to a separate channel, which is called an auxiliary or a return channel. Sends can route multiple channels into one return track and then apply group processing on that channel that is gonna be applied across multiple instruments by only using one channel to control the processing of that. It's most commonly used for things like reverbs or delays, but it can be used for other things as well. You can individually dial in the amount of volume from each individual track to the return track. Let's jump into Ableton Live and see how we can use this. So we have my project here. I have a clap, a hi-hat, and a crash. In the session view and the arrangement view, you can find the sends and returns symbols right here. So if these are not highlighted, they won't be showing. And you can just click on that, so that sends, and that shows your return tracks. So by default, your project might have the reverb and delay returns already set up for you. You can add a return track by right-clicking and clicking insert return track. And then we can take a look at the arrangement view. You have your sends over here, and then you have your returns tracks down here. And the same thing, you can insert them here. Let's go into our session view and we'll add a reverb to three different instruments inside of our mixer here. We just go into our sends here and we can see that A is the reverb. So we can click on it. We can see that the reverb is down here and we can make adjustments if you'd like. Let's open up our arrangement view here and we have just this drum loop. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start to dial in reverb on the separate channels into our return tracks using our sends right here. Let's just solo the clap and hear how it sounds by dialing in just a little bit of reverb. What's happening is we're sending a duplicate signal from this clap into the return track. And that return track is gonna have 100% wet of the signal. And we can check that in our reverb here. So we don't have any of the dry signal coming through. So we're not duplicating the dry signal. We're only adding a wet processed signal to the sound as well. So let's go in and we'll do the hi-hats next. And last, we'll add quite a bit of reverb to the crash. And let's hear all three sounds together. So what we've done here is added reverb to three different instruments, but only using one reverb. The benefits to this is we're using less processing power to add reverb to multiple instruments. Another benefit is that all these instruments are gonna sound like they're coming in the same room because they're using the same reverb settings and that's gonna make the mix sound a little bit more cohesive. But say you wanted to add reverb with a longer tail onto this crash, put another return track down here and then you could add a separate reverb with a much longer decay time. The first main benefit to this is that you can use sends and returns as a way to apply processing to a duplicate signal so that you're not compromising the original sound in the same way that you would be if you were adding things like reverbs or delays, which can sometimes reduce the clarity of an original signal. By using sends and returns, you can dial in the exact amount of processing that you want to a 100% dry signal and add the 100% wet signal in without affecting the original sound. 